Welcome to Bookin' It. Today's episode will be The Odyssey Part, hang on, 6. <laughs> 16 through 21. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to Booking It. And yes, I, I had to look up uh, what part we were on. Because the thing doing, is, he, he looked it up right before we started <laughs> recording, know. too. And I, I blanked, man. I blanked. Doing podcast intros is hard sometimes. Okay. Ooh, well, yeah. thank you for joining sure, us so again. Dope. I'm, of course, your eloquent host, Cooper Cobbs. To my right, Mr. Bryson Bostwick. Hey, everybody. To my left, Mr. Isaiah Radsky. Hello. Tanner is at home because he almost died. No, I'm kidding. He, he's sick. Uh, so, Dying. So he's, we miss yeah. him so very much. We do. We miss him. But, hey, we're all right. We're here. Uh, back talking about the Odyssey. We got... Five, no, six books to talk about. Bryson's leading, so take it away, Bryson. Oh, boy. Yeah, what, what, a, what a day to lead <laughs> when we've got, like, six books to cover. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. So. Uh, you have enough notes. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Notebook is expensive. <sighs> okay. Original uh, opinions, thoughts, anything y'all want to get out of the way before we go into uh, We're uh, almost done with it. Oh, you're almost done. We're almost done. I know. What's, what's fun the misery is, like, is almost over. I'm mystery. <laughs> the mystery. <laughs> the misery is. Misery. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. okay. Well, I think what I enjoyed so far is like the uh, the kind of slow build to the climax. Oh, you know? my goodness. Like yes. we've been, it's been slow. slow. He's gotten here at Ithaca. He's slowly kind of finding his footing, seeing who's an ally, who's not. He's revealing himself to, um, you know, his son, Telemachus. His eventual nursemaid finds out, you know, yeah. like what's going on. Anyway, but then slow build, slow build, progressive omens, portents are being revealed, and then boom, he strings his bow, it, and it, oh the my string, goodness. it's a good moment. It's, it's been everyone. so, I don't think I've ever been so excited about a really? school book. Really? I was just like, oh, it finally happened. Not not excited, <laughs> just like, uh, most books that we read that are really good, we read in like one or two weeks. True. And this True. is a book we've read for how many? Like yeah. Way too many. Three, seven, four, eight. What? Seven. Seven weeks? This is, this is week Two four, minutes. and we were reading it before. Yeah. Well, this is, this is part many. seven of our discussion. Okay. So okay. it'll be so eight weeks because we missed last week. Eight. Eight, eight seven, weeks. eight. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Gosh. So, and, yeah, the, just the buildup. It's, oh, my goodness. I was, I was, as I was reading it, I uh, I just kept turning the page, just kept going, kept going, and was excited for everything right. that came next. Uh, is, yeah, the, the, see, I was reading it like, are we gonna get there yet? Oh my gosh. Oh <laughs> there was my gosh. there was one We're not there yet. There was when one part. There, like, oh, there was cool. one part that I I was like, okay, let's just get it over with. Stop, stop. Uh, when they went back and told the story of uh, how Odysseus was named and uh, hunting the boar, mm. oh, all yeah. that. But uh, anyway, yeah. And then getting to the very end of book twenty one. I, I almost read the next book. I'm, I'm not I just lie. finished the book. Not gonna lie. I just you did. I'm like, it's um. You why read? wait? I you just read, read the entire thing. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I was very close to, but I was. I mean, like, I was no, stuck in no. a car for 20 hours. What am I gonna do? Uh, yeah. Okay. So starting with book 16. Uh, anyone want to start off? Ooh, book 16. What what happens in book 16? I know that was so. Uh, read I read that week. three weeks ago. <laughs> oh, Odysseus uh, talks to Telemachus. Yeah, yeah. Is that when he first reveals himself to yes, Telemachus? Yes, looks like it. He, the son finally knows. He I finally like it because he, he sees Odysseus for the first time and is like, "Hey, what happened to that stranger guy? You're like a god. Stop it." <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, right, he's like, see, "No, see. dude, it's Athena. Trust me, it's Athena. He's making me look like this." He's like, "Oh, you're right. Hey, dad." And they, and they hug. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. But yeah. The, it's a continuation of his vowing that he's going to be more wise and cunning than Agamemnon was. Right. In he's revealing gonna, himself to his family. Yeah, he's going to be like, I'm not going to get killed in my bathtub. <laughs> you, and uh, yeah. I want you to help me, Telemachus. Yes. So. Okay. And then book 17. Uh, I think we, like, no, book okay. 16, 17, we see a huge change in Telemachus. I, like, yeah, I am. He goes he's, he's come home a man, you know? Yep. He's finally willing to stand up to the suitors, finally going to say what he thinks. And he uses uh, some pretty. Uh, heavy brooding language to them. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, yeah, seriously, like he is. He's owning. He's he's uh he's you know staking. He's finally ground. courageous, and I mean, he has a really good reason to. He knows his dad's back, and he's yeah. seen him in all he his glory, confidence. and he he knows something big is gonna happen, and I'm gonna be a part of well, it. Well, and yeah, and he knows the plan. Like I'm not gonna play the chicken anymore. His plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Odysseus kind of gets taken into the town to beg by Eumaeus. Yep. Yeah, Eumaeus. Uh, Eumaeus. 
Uh, Not much else the, really the happened. The goat herd. Oh, yeah. The Everybody. Stupid go herd. So it's it's weird because like you see this kind of like Odysseus, this humble person, you know, the beggar king, mm-hmm. and then kind of working his way back up, and then everybody at the lower level is just like a jerk to him. I mean, the goat herd is mean. <laughs> then you have the other beggar, you know, who like fights Odysseus and is like, yeah, like, that's like eighteen. Yeah, exactly. Iris. Exactly. And so it's really weird that everybody he meets on the lower level is like oh, these awful people. Yeah. That he's gonna yeah. like, you know, beat up. I don't know. But I think it's fun seeing like the suitors at the highest level of society are dirtbags, and he hates them. He's going to mm. mark them out for uh, vengeance. And then same thing at the lower level of all these people. Oh. At, at the lower level, he has more patience for them, right? Yes. Because he tells the beggar guy if he doesn't kill him. He warns him. The guy doesn't Aww. back down. He, he, <laughs> he kills someone. Oh, no. but anyway, such patience. He kinda, he has, I know. But he, has, he understands that they're the lowdowns and uh, that they're not really at fault, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but he, he sure. has more patience for them sure. than he does the people at the top. Yeah, so yeah he's yeah. just like a socialist. So, so that's uh, eighteen. Uh, all, all the while, we keep flashing back to Penelope and what's going on with her, and she's just weeping her eyes out. Like, and then Athena like helps her to sleep. Yes, yes. <laughs> so then, uh, book nineteen. Book nineteen is where it gets good, man. It's mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, because then he comes, he comes and like talks to Penelope. And tells him where he saw Odysseus and lets her kind of know that he did see Odysseus because, well, yeah. he, he knows what she's looking for and gives her that. So Yeah. 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 He he even said he remarks on the exact clothes that he was wearing when he left. Yeah. Or the clothes mm-hmm. that she gave him. So she's like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah you, you probably saw him. Uh, and then. Is this, this is when his uh, maid yeah, watches that's him. The, the maid, mm-hmm. uh, when she's watching him, yeah, sees the scar. Uh, and it's like, oh, huh? Yep. You're 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 you're, you're Odysseus. You're the master. Oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> and she okay. like exclaim. She like shouts. And uh, but for some reason, we can only guess it's Athena or somebody. Penelope doesn't notice. Nope. She's just That's off shouting. doing someone yeah, something the, else. The wash bowl like clangs in the big hall. Uh-huh. And nobody notices nope. that. Yeah. Like, oh, that's normal. She does that all the time. Yeah. She's <laughs> old. She gets. She goes to refill it. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Moving on, book, book twenty. Book twenty. Uh, uh, what? What? I'm thinking of uh, Odysseus pulls aside the cowherd and swineherd, mm-hmm. um, and basically asks them, "What? Wh- how far are you willing to follow Odysseus, your master?" And uh, we we kind of see like the the, uh, the cowherd takes more of the authority here, and Eumaeus just follows him. Uh, yeah, the swineherd's there swineherd, too, yeah. but it's the cowherd that is talking most of the time. Oh, yeah, uh, and right. they're like to the death. Well, to the yeah. death. We'll t- we'll follow him to the death, I guess. Yeah. And um, so he's like, mm. okay, well, now that we've got this <laughs> sorted out, uh, well, I am Odysseus, and <laughs> you're following me to the death like tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> get ready. Yeah. He also has Zeus for omens and stuff like that, like a good omen. Yeah. I oh, was yeah. Penelope because I think in nineteen Penelope goes, hey, I had this dream that like. There were all these, I don't know, geese. And then an eagle came uh-huh. and like ate them all up. And the eagle was like, "I'm Odysseus. Yeah. And I'll save you." She's like, "What does that? What does that mean?" And he goes, "It can only mean one thing. I'm so wise. It means that Odysseus will come and kill the suitors." I know. Let's go. I'm so smart. And she's like, "Whoa! I didn't think about that." <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. In twenty, Zeus kind of confirms Odysseus that he'll see success. Mm-hmm. With some some lightning bolts and stuff, and then yeah, yeah the, the thunder, the thunder clap happens, and there's the no there's no storm, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Telemachus keeps whipping the suitors and uh, verbally mostly. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. Uh, and, book twenty one, uh, right? Is yeah. yeah. Move on twenty one. We have uh, Antinous, and or and yeah, Antinous. Yeah. yeah, he's been like one of the main he's main the, suitors. the ringleader of the jerks. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, oh my goodness, he's just. So hateful. I, I like. I, I don't know the other any other word for it. Like, oh, well, I've got some quotes to read. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get into that. Okay. Okay. Then then uh, didn't Penelope just basically say, "All right, I got one contest. Whoever succeeds can marry me." Yes. Right. You got to string Odysseus's bow and then shoot through all his axes. And Lightheart goes through this pretty well. I think he he just at first he says, "Okay, did she know that uh, Odysseus was coming back? Had right. she finally? Because oh my goodness." She has to be blind to not see the like five different omens that right. Zeus has sent. Um, like yeah. two people 
the the prophet bard murder man right uh he has <laughs> he has yeah. said that she that uh, odysseus is back right odysseus, odysseus himself right has said something about he is he's back on the mainland he is back he's back at here. home yep uh and, and she's just she like no nope, i'm yeah. not gonna leave it i don't want to get a, get my hopes up uh yeah and so she says okay we're well, gonna get, set up this competition so by the way with the axes it's always unclear to me i don't know to, like, what punch it is through the yeah. metal or are they hollow axes like or is he I've knocking them down like that like movie yeah, yeah scene i know thing, i know like the beginning of the movies yeah, like, yeah. whatever like that like where it's like hollow like right just a hole. i haven't seen I'm it what, sure. what, what is it's it? like a, just a quick little movie company logo yeah where they do like odysseus shoots through the axes and they're hollow axes it. yeah mm-hmm. um Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Either way, obviously, stringing the bow is a big deal. Yes, yeah, yeah, because no one, no one can do it. No, not Telemachus tries. Uh, Antinous tries. Uh, what's the other one? There's another main ringleader. I can't remember his name. Um, it starts with an E. Eurylochus or something like that. He tries. Oh, Every, yeah, everyone Eurymachus, tries. Eurymachus. Eurymachus. But none of them can do it. And then the beggar king. Comes. Yeah, the beggar king is like, hey, let, let, let me give it a try. Let yeah. me give it a try. And like, a oh, young whippersnapper. Ah. They, they don't believe Lankus him. And is like, hey. Uh, give, hey look, give him a try. Hey, uh, yeah. Well, let him try. Yeah. So. The clever trap. Surprise, surprise. Cool. He's able to do it. Hang on. Can I just read this passage? Yes. This is great. Okay, so they, they mock him. So they mocked. But Odysseus, mastermind in action, once he handled the great bow and scanned every inch, then, like an expert singer, skilled at lyre and song, who strains a string to a new peg with ease, making the pliant sheep gut fast at either end. So, with its virtuoso ease, Odysseus strings his mighty bow. Quickly, his right hand plucked the string to test its pitch, and under its touch, it sang out cl- loud and clear, and sharp as a swallow's cry. Horror swept through the suitors, faces blanching white, and Zeus cracked the sky with a bolt, his blazing sign. And the great man who had borne so much rejoiced at last that the son of cunning Kronos flung that omen down for him. He snatched a wing arrow lying bare on the board. The rest still bristled deep inside the quiver, soon to be tasted by all the feasters there. Setting shaft on the hand grip, drawing the notch and bowstring back, back, right from his stool. Just as he sat, but aiming straight and true, he let fly, and never missing an axe, from the first axe handle, clean on through to the last and out. The shaft with his weighted brazen head shut free. Wow. That, yep. That's <laughs> epic. That That's is. pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Oh That's like, like sometimes these things can let you down. Like it's build up, build up, build up. And it's like, oh, yeah, that was uh-huh. it. But this is like serious build up, serious tension. Everything's like converging on the point. And then, man, Odysseus strings the bow. He like, you know, flicks it. I, I know. Flicks it. And then like the note of doom, the suitors hear. It like sounds true. Yeah, the, he yeah. just he strings it up. He's like, mm, let me just pluck it, and then all, all, all the faces yeah. says blanched white. Just oh, the, the horror on their faces as they realize, oh, well, we're wh- wh- who who is this so, man actually? So Isaiah found the eclipse. Is it is it yes, hollow arrows? I think this is hollow it. axes. I mean, yeah. So it's like this. So what I was imagining, something like that. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. yeah. I, I have seen that. Before. That makes sense. But that is, that's more of a test of accuracy than strength. But I guess you know, mm-hmm. stringing the bow is the strength test. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, uh, that's, let's, that's, where let's, we, that's where we ended. That's we got to wait for the climax. Or, I, I know. guess they didn't wait. But. <laughs> well, we're done. Okay, bye, guys. Bad. <laughs> okay, no. So let's let's go back and, and take a deeper look at all of this. So going oh, back boy. to book 16, um, I, I just – I thought it was really interesting how – Everyone in the story is so hesitant to believe uh, that he's actually back. Telemachus just doesn't believe him at first. Sa- says you, ha- you have to be a god or a vision from a god. You, there's no way. Yeah. You're my dad. Uh, it's. I think it's crazy. Out of everyone, the the first, the only person that receives him almost immediately is the is the maid. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she she sees the scar. She's like, oh, well, that's you. Okay. Cool. cool. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not not anyone else. Not his family members, at least. Yeah. Well, I mean, Athena kind of helped. I mean, didn't do him any favors by making him True. look so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do y'all think about every everyone's point 
in the book so far? How how much have people progressed? Uh, has Telemachus really progressed at all coming to this point? Has Penelope uh, progressed or degressed? Regressed? I don't know. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> those, those I don't know. <laughs> degressed and regressed, yes. Uh, Odysseus, maybe Eumaeus, the swineherd? I don't know. What do you all think? Yeah, I think one of the reasons I like the Odyssey more than the Iliad is kind of its um, tendency to like give its characters more of an arc, more of a story, you know? Like in the Iliad, pretty much everybody stays the same, yep. except for people who, you know, die, they fight, they die. kill each other, they die. Right, exactly. Yeah. But in the Odyssey, we have Telemachus, Odysseus, who both undergo a change. You know, they both undergo a uh, Odysseus a return to dom- domestic uh, domesticity, domesticate. I don't know. <laughs> return to domestic life after yeah. having spent twenty years, you know, being being abroad and fighting b- fighting battles, and then Telemachus, who was once a young pushover now becomes a man mm-hmm. you know and so seeing them arrive both of their arcs converge like at the climax yes it's pretty great it's pretty great so they've changed definitely telemachus has become a man odysseus has become willing to undergo this kind of um willing to undergo a non anonymity and he's willing to undergo this idea of i'm not gonna reveal my name right yeah. because i got him in trouble in the first couple of books yep. and he'd be like hey uh you cyclops it was me, Odysseus. <laughs> I bested and you. And Poseidon was like, oh, was it? Uh, <laughs> oh, was it? We will make Odysseus pay. <laughs> now he's You're like, screwed now. Okay. Now he's like, uh, to get what I want, um, to make this, to set this kingdom right, I have to undergo a transformation from beggar to king. And so it's willing to underdo that. So it's, it's you know, his arc is completing right now. And mm-hmm. then Telemachus went on his journey, trusted, then became a man. The Penelope is also really interesting because I think we'll talk about her later as well. But... She has held out for so long. She's remained faithful. But now it's been 20 years. You know, Odysseus gave her a timeline, like, hey, 20 years, you know, you can marry somebody else. And so, really, she doesn't want to marry anybody, and she hates the suitors. But also, at some point, like, to keep her family together, to keep Ithaca together, she's going to have to make a call. That's kind of mm-hmm. what she does. But she, obviously, I think you said, Bryce, you made a good case. She has reason to believe that now is the right time to make that call because something will happen that will be good, you know. Yeah. But all also three of our did. main characters have changed. All the suitors are murdered. <laughs> well, hey, spoilers, <laughs> spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> We're not there yet, man. <laughs> There's not been any sense of this. In case you don't know yet. how stories work, <laughs> he murders. I mean, it does. He does talk about it in one of the books that no, we read, like, where he's like, no, I don't I, know if I can kill all of them or something like that. Well, like, in the passage, and Athena's that like, I just oh, read, don't worry, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and so is Zeus. The passage I just read, though, like he plucks the string, and the narrator's like, yeah, that that boat's gonna like kill all of them later. So mm-hmm. it's kind of it's kind of there. Yeah, and. I think it's it's crazy the um, the opinion of the suitors towards Telemachus has changed like that. Yeah, sure. Like I remember reading some of them, and Telemachus, you know, lays into them, and thinking like, "Oh man, they're gonna like jump on him." Yeah. But they kind of lay off. Yeah. They do. They, to an extent, they finally respect him. They do. Because he has proven he is a man. And he's willing he, to he stand. He got up around to their trap. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got around their trap. He's like actually the host now. Yes. And it's like insulting them and i think uh <laughs> penelope definitely sees that too she's like yeah, okay I, I need her to, to go upstairs and then he's like and she's like oh you're so wise my son i will go upstairs yeah. <laughs> like, what what <laughs> my mom tried to do that she'd slap me up my <laughs> yeah yeah like, bah, bah, bah. go to your room <laughs> <laughs> bah, bah, bah. <laughs> i like you go to your room yeah <laughs> but he's finally he's finally become a man and he's able to he has a commanding presence he's finally walked the hard road and proven himself capable. Um, he's he's also stood up to all of them, even though he he said multiple times in their faces, "I know you wanted to murder me, but <laughs> here, here I am now. I'm still alive, and you suck. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> too late. I have taken control, and he, I, I'm pretty sure he says a few times, I'm I'm not gonna rest until y'all are gone or you're dead. Yeah. You're all dead. I love yeah. how book twenty two starts. I'm not gonna say it, but the beginning of book twenty two is pretty great. Go say. <laughs> yeah. Save it for next week. I will. I will. <laughs> uh, moving on. It's, yeah, I, I guess through all this, a, a, a ton of omens, ton of signs. Uh-huh. Um, the the bard murder man, he, he comes back and he's like, okay, I, I have another, another omen. Uh, I think he tells it to Penelope. And he says, yep, yep. He, he's come back just, Stop worrying about it. And she's like, I don't, no, no, I'm, no, I'm not going to believe you. And, uh, but I also thought it was really interesting how 
when Odysseus finally gets in in his own house and he's eating with all of the eating with the uh, beggar suitors, um, he he talks to at least one of them, trying to convict him, trying to uh, stick his conscience. Oh yeah, uh, prick his conscience, trying to get him to realize. Okay, what 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 are we doing I mean, right now? I just, this is no definitely like trying to test out who who is my enemy and who is my ally on mm-hmm. the island. Yeah, he so does it even with the uh, with the housemaids too. Yeah, who's gonna be feasted on by the birds? You know, and who will I let live? Feast on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's like that's kind of the language that Revelation uses, right? That. When Christ comes back, all he, you know, he slays his enemies, and the birds are like feeding on the corpses. Yep. Yeah, yeah. they're um, okay. Uh, three. Not I had a really good quote here from. Uh, well, not really good. Awful quote from. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it just took a turn. Antonis, <laughs> but it, it's just like, do do not see who you are in this story, and they they think they are really. I don't know if they think they're noble or that they are taking care of Penelope in any way or trying to support her, but they're really just making yeah, every question. part of her like, situation miserable. Do the suitors know where they are in the story? They definitely don't. They are so unaware yeah. of just like where they are in the yep. story. Um, so Antonis says, um, he's talking to Eumaeus, the swineherd. Uh, Your Highness, swineherd, why drag this to town? He's talking about the beggar, yep. uh, beggar king Odysseus. Uh, haven't we got our share of vagabonds to deal with? Disgusting beggars who lick the feasters' plates. Isn't it quite enough, these swarming crowds consuming your master's bounty? <laughs> Must you invite this rascal in the bargain? That's Dang so, dude. like, dramatic irony. I, like, this is there, like, I'm going to murder you later. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, you just described yourself. E- yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Uh, the, there was another thing I thought was really weird. What is it? Penelope says something. Oh, oh, Penelope... Praise that Odysseus will come back, come soon. Uh, I, I wanted to do some research on this, and maybe some of our listeners will, will be able to and uh, find out more about this. But Penelope prays that something will happen, that Odysseus will come back, that w- will get rid of the suitors uh, before she finally gives in to this contest. And then Telemachus sneezes, and she's like, oh, whoa. That it's gonna happen now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he, it, it says, I remember that. Uh, at her last words, Telemachus shook with a lusty sneeze, like a thunderclap resounding up and down the halls. The queen was seized with laughter, calling out to Eumaeus, "Wing words, quickly, go, bring me the stranger now, face to face." Like thunderclap throughout the halls, describing so a sneeze. Death come down with grim like finality on these suitors, one and all. Not a single man escape his sudden doom. Another thing, mark my words, I tell you, I, if I'm convinced that all he says is true, I'll dress him in shirt and cloak and handsome clothes. Well, that's wow. a great way to describe a sneeze, though. A thunder <laughs> clap throughout the halls. I know. Or I'm going to describe my dad's like that from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. Any, any, anytime one of y'all sneeze, I'm going to just take it to mean y'all are approving of whatever I just said before. Yeah, I, sick, I ain't sneezing again. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this, is, this, is a good, this is a good quote here from uh, Lightheart. The suitors clearly have no clue who this beggar is. Yeah. And in their ignorance, they are less than dogs. For even Argos, Odysseus's dog, recognizes his master upon his return. Mm-hmm. So this is a good reminder again to, hey, sometimes you may be a suitor. You know, you may be intruding upon someone's hospitality. You may be like a, a dirt bag to some lady. I don't know. <laughs> but be aware of who you are in the story. Like have some perspective. Be self-aware. Mm-hmm. Of just like what kind of character you're playing. No, oh my goodness. That, that's something that gets me every time listening to Indy Wilson, just what kind of character are you in the story? Take, take a look at who you are from the outside looking in, Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just your own two eyes looking at the world. Yeah. And look at the third person story, not the first person story. Yeah. You'll see a whole lot more and you'll realize you're not as likable as you think you are (laughs) most of the time, at least. What's the, uh, what's the uh, quote from the Hobbit? You, I like, I like half as you, half of you, Half as well as you deserve, and I like less than half of you. Half as well as you deserve. I don't know. <laughs> what? That that started out as a good quote. That started out good, and then it just kind of ended. Yeah. That's because well, nobody can figure it out. What he's saying is, half of you I like, but but I don't, I don't even like you as much as you deserve. Mm-hmm. Then I like less than half of you. Half as well as you deserve. So he's saying some of you I don't like very much, but that's on me. Like I should like you more. Mm-hmm. I think. 
Anyway. Well, I think it, 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 wow, well, you just oh, described man. it and made it sound like half of you I don't like as nearly as much it. as I should, and half of you I like more than I should. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe he said that. It's a confusing quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Back back to the book. Um, I, I'm going to, for some reason, th- there were just so many good quotes in here, so I'm going to keep reading some quotes. Right, toss, uh, toss them to Isaiah. Make him read some. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah. Uh, oh, I found the quote. <laughs> from the fellowship of the ring oh yeah i don't know half of you half as well as i should like oh. and i like less than half of you half as well as you deserve <laughs> okay. what Didn't that, that sounds less. about like what i was saying yeah yeah exactly yeah okay. see uh, i was right trying to bring it up 384, right. 384. Uh, of what book where what what huh of 384 what book? just page 384 oh oh yeah i'm like <laughs> no. um that's a lot of the <laughs> Like 24 of those. Oh, uh, where is it? Line 309. So right three above 384. Your way. Start with your way. Three where? This where is where? Penelope. 309. 309. I did it your All right. How much you want me to read? Just to the end of that like little uh, yeah, yeah, thing? Yeah, just to the end of that paragraph. All right. Your way is a far cry from the time-honored way. Your, of su- or time-honored way of suitors locked in rivalry, striving to win some noble woman. A wealthy man's daughter. Uh, a wealthy man's daughter. They bring in their own calves and lambs to feast the um, to feast the friends of the bride to be. Yes, and shower her with gleaming gifts as well. They don't devour the woman's goods scot free. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. have you heard of any wedding or any party or gathering uh, celebration where everyone going to celebrate celebrate someone then goes there to just take everything from that someone? That's that's basically what this is. They're going to the wedding and they're like, okay, instead of us giving you gifts, we're going to take all of the things you have as our own. <laughs> and it's just completely backwards. And oh my goodness. But, Hospitality infringers will get their comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, uh, these, these men clearly don't know who they are or what they're asking of Penelope, someone that they claim to love. I don't know if they really <laughs> say they love her. I don't know, man. They definitely don't. They, uh, they, love they the lust wealth. after her, for sure. Mm-hmm. And they um, want her money. Yeah, yep. and they want her possessions, her wealth. But, oh my goodness, how... <laughs> I don't know how she's been able to bear it for this long. Yeah. It's no idea. She's a strong woman. <laughs> strong, independent woman. Uh, one right. thing I should want to say here before I don't know how much more you have, Bryson, but yeah, uh, in Heroes, the City of Man, Whitehart points out that really this story is not so much like two smart people, Telemachus and Odysseus, using their wits to conquer the bad guys, but rather it's uh, a man getting in just in time to save his bride from the dragon. Mm-hmm. You know, fair. Or and the gods controlling all of it for a good story for themselves. Yeah, well, that's, that's, I mean, that that's, why, that's why the Christian structure of kill the dragon, get the girl is much better than the pagan version of it, you know. But also at the same time, I, I don't know. I think our society has kind of rejected that that structure because they feel like it's sexist, I guess. I don't know. Of like, mm. hey, it should be kill the dragon, get the man, like Barbie, female empowerment. Let's go. <laughs> but right. I, nope. Like, nope. There is something powerful and potent about reading the story. And yeah. Just understanding all Odysseus has gone through to get back to his wife. Who has been, as you just said, uh, strong. He, she's waited. She's mm-hmm. been faithful. She's been, you know, uh, long suffering and, yeah. and patient and strong. He gets back, and then he sees his son become a man, and then he reveals himself and kills the dragon. You know, mm-hmm. like there's something powerful about that. And we read the scene. Like, it's more than just the epic language because it's good language, um, but also it's just the build up, the story, the tension, everything converges, and it's beautiful. And I, I don't think that. Other stories can ring true, or other falser versions. They're just they're they're not as potent, as powerful, as I don't, as this story. So yeah, I was listening to uh, an episode you and Matthew did on what makes a good book. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> episode thirty-five. It what? Yes, episode thirty-five, and yeah, that that really ties into this. Just what what is it that has made me like this book so much? Yeah. Uh, it's it, it has been the writing, but not always the writing. Mm-hmm. There are certain points like at the end of 21 where you're just really into it and oh my goodness you're feeling every like the whole moment is being described so perfectly and you know the tension you know how everyone feels in that moment uh and you're feeling exactly how homer wanted you to feel Mm -hmm. uh 
so uh, a, a good book is not always the whole book isn't always those moments right it, it's a build up to those moments right and it would diminish the climax if everything was climaxes yes <laughs> yes so like that, that's why there are uh that's why we in heroes we've seen so many of those um pyramid uh pyramid schemes of the uh <laughs> no, 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 not that not that uh, just uh the levels co- comparing um what, no one idea. event to another in the book uh how, how can i describe it? I, I need the I, picture. I don't know what you're trying to say I like know. parallelism or what yeah yeah um like a pyramid triangles <laughs> yeah like that uh, all of oh, the oh, all of the uh, moments uh, in the chiastic, book are related. Chiastic, chiastic, chiastic pyramid structure. <laughs> structure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, just all everything is related to each other, but leads up to one point. Right. Yeah. And, and the thing actually is like kind of at the center, and then everything from the, and like in, in in the West Western structure or in modern story tr- story structure, everything kind of like rises and ends at the, at the climax and resolution. You know. Mm-hmm. So like there's setup and payoff, but here it's like concentric circles you know turning point in the middle and then backwards to parallel the rest yeah yeah so um odysseus seems to be really good at coming up with these elaborate lies yep. to whoever whoever he's speaking to and this one is to his wife i don't know if that's a good thing or not yeah w- what do you do you all really think that is was that necessary was that something that helped um help keep his identity a secret um, or or could he have kept his identity a secret without an elaborate lie to his wife? Well, I mean, Athena was kind of like <laughs> blinding everyone to the fact that it's him. So he probably could have done it without the li- elaborate lie. Yeah. But like this adds yeah. to his, adds his, to it, yeah. um, his cunning. But I mean, whenever a God is like, Yo, I'm gonna basically blind everyone and make it so no one can see. I don't think it matters what you do, even yeah. if you blatantly say like I'm Odysseus. I don't think they'll notice yeah. or care. Yeah. <sighs> um, out of out of all of this, have, have we gotten to y'all's favorite part so far, or, or did oh, yeah, y'all stringing the bows? Probably my favorite part so far. Yeah, I like that part. And then well, I mean the next chapter, but <laughs> <laughs> the action. The next yeah. chapter is his favorite. The part. first like two. The paragraphs John Wick are part. Great. <laughs> The first that few paragraphs like. of the next chapter are like great. So guys, yeah. I'm working on a prompt for our donor shout-out story. And I tried to like get it do a, t- a two-parter. Oh. Part one ends with him stringing his bow, and then part two would end at the end of the story, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it's really dumb, so I'm rewording it. But what <laughs> happened was <laughs> it, it I tried to frame it in such a way I just, like it had to give us like tension uh-huh. and climax and like things actually. Leave happen. us hanging. And guess what? It says that Odysseus his arrow found its mark. Piercing the heart of adversity. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, what? And the, those around witness the power of perseverance. Oh man, so this is so terrible. Why are they all value centered? <laughs> I mean, why? Why are these values twenty first century <laughs> weak therapeutic values? <laughs> I don't um, know, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't have much else to say other than this. Um, okay, keep on booking. No, okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> like. It was a really good picture of who we are to be um, while we're waiting for the king to come home. Like, are we continuing on in debauchery and sin and just gluttonous feasting, um, living only for ourselves? Or are we waiting expectantly, longing for the king to come home? Um, Just doing everything we can to still honor him, even even while he is not here. Um, Cause we, we see the faithful being uh, Eumaeus and the cow herd and Telemachus and Penelope. And just how can we be like them in the story? Um, I think, I think um, Eumaeus doing everything he can to still honor um still honor Odysseus. He's still taking care of all of his herds. His, uh, his pigs are still flourishing. And even so, Odysseus comes back blood splattered. And Eumaeus <laughs> is like, Hey, all your pigs are good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he still 
does his best even for the people that are um that are stealing everything from his master yeah. which i thought was crazy like he's, he's still he's giving still them, them the, fat, the vatted yeah more. he still gives them the best because that is what his master would have done um not not continue to let them <laughs> yeah uh steal from him yep but he uh he definitely gives them his best in all things and i think that's something that we can take from him one from him even yes. we are still called to give our best to the world true but not be of the world well work hardly but not for men yeah. yes yes yeah. work for men but not exactly thank yeah. you for clarifying no i i understood yeah that's great yep. work hard as unto the lord not for men. But working under the Lord play, plays itself out. And, yes. You know, yeah. Working for, for men, but not, yeah, not and for men, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I was <laughs> listening. People to, get it. People get it. Yeah. I was listening to a uh, uh, teaching on First Thessalonians last night. Oh, and yeah. it was talking about just how the world doesn't see um, hard work as normal anymore. Yeah. And, like, God has called us to work hard as unto him. Um, not for man, but we work for man because of because of God, um, and just like we need to be striving for our best, working hard with our hands, yeah. um, and that glorifies God. Mm-hmm. That is what He has called us to do. So, with that, Amen. All right, thank you for leading, Bryson. Great job. Do some. Donor I rest shout my outs. case. I rest my case. You want a donor shout out, Isaiah? Where would you go? Uh, patreon.com forward slash booking it and donate to any of our tiers that are five dollars and up that's correct you can also find us some free stuff over at our website at 412podcasting.com you can see stuff. some some mug shots and some <laughs> uh, photos of <laughs> sunburned bryson and yep. uh, oh yeah I was really sunburned was that day sunburned. Okay. yep I forgot uh, anyway check us out there patreon our instagram at booking it pod fun stuff now uh, ChatGPT is awful so we're not gonna yep. use it so no. we're gonna come up with something special here we are <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> you guys come up with something special. Uh, I ain't the creative right, Bryce, one, guys. What, what, what should we come up? What, what should we do for dinner? Shout outs. Well, we did French fries last time. So wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> no, no, no. The last time that we came up with our own story. Oh, okay. oh, you're right. Yeah, that was a weird story. I know. <laughs> that was so weird. You know, I'll figure out ChatGPT. We'll get this. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> not right now. Right. Um, no, you guys. You guys figure out your thing. Okay. Okay. I'll find um, something for next week. All right. Here's what's gonna happen. Okay. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Here's what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, actually. Uh, okay, so let's do... Mm, I'm, I'm reading um, a lot of time right now, so yeah. I'm wanting it to be something related to that. Uh, are our heroes okay. are lost in a time that they do not know? Oh, lost mm. in time. Yes. Are they outlaws in said time? Uh, lost? Only only a few are able to guide them. Oh. So a few are, are not lost. Yes. A few are not lost, but... Okay, so... Uh, I, I don't want to lose track of <laughs> who is who. So Moses and Zara are the ones that are leading everyone through time. Okay. They are able to um, pass through time. They have led everyone to... Um, where, where, where should they lead them to? They have led them to um, the great age of cybersecurity. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, bro. That's where, crazy. <laughs> where cybersecurity is very much existent, but it actually works. It for, works. For most. For most. So there's not a huge demand because it works. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking more of like um, Minority Report kind of. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it 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 works, but there are flaws in the system. But we we cover those up. So they gotta they gotta yes. uncover all the flaws of the system. Yes, yes. So Moses and Zara are wielding through time. Did that does that really work? Wheeling. <laughs> <laughs> they are flashing through time, uh, fixing the things that Anna and Emily have destroyed. Oh no! I, I don't what know. What did they destroy though? What what did you say? What have they destroyed? Yeah, what yeah. infrastructure? You said it fixing the things they destroyed, but like what? They have destroyed peanut butter and jelly. <gasps> they have no peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yes, awful. 
So instead of making Uncrustables, they made crust offs. Okay, but but this is this is I'm a cybersecurity. <laughs> yeah, wait. So in the future, people no longer taste it. They must interact with it on a screen. Yeah. But they've wiped the code of peanut butter and jelly. No. <laughs> and our heroes have to restore peanut butter and jelly by bringing the real stuff back. Yes. And not by using the internet fake version. They they've become uh completely. Uh, they're no longer materialists, no, I, I but uh, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. they're it? not. They're not Gnostics. They're, <laughs> they're not Gnostics. They are. Yeah. Um, so Nana and Van Papi and Wela are kind of Nana is the president of the evil Minority Report country. Okay. That yeah. wants to keep everything digital, <laughs> and has but she has secretly hired Anna and Emily to remove peanut butter and jelly. Ooh. Because she wants people's lives to become more mundane. And 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 taking away the taste of peanut butter and jelly will Makes people drastically blind. ruin people's lives. Right. Just just Human like flourishing drops. Like it, it's the butterfly effect. True. If, if you got rid of peanut butter and jelly, who knows what would happen. Right. People have to eat turkey and ham sandwiches. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Anyway, Van Pappy and Whale are the head of the resistance. All right. Yes. And they realize that Nana is removing things from code. But mm-hmm. they realize the way to counteract it is not cybersecurity. Um, is to actually like restore real things. And so they yes. call Moses and Zara, expert cybersecurity people, to kind of draw Anna and Emily off guard. Are they no longer traveling through time? They are traveling through time, but they've okay. arrived. Okay, yes. They arrived. They're famous. They're, you know. It, it's like, uh, they like have, when, they can have many adventures, you know? when the Pevensey children have been called right, back to Narnia. Right, exactly. Anyway, so Anna and Emily get thrown off thinking Van Pepe and Wayla are trying to restore it to, to the code, but they're not trying that. Because yeah. they, they won't do that. So Moses and Zara arrive and like start working on the code, and Emily like trying to like counter hack. I know it's it's cool hacking scene. Isaiah yes. can do it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, while this is happening, Keenan, Howdy, and Jenny show up from the time because Moses and Zara have called them from time. Yes, yes. With real peanut butter and jelly. Oh, from boy. the 1980s. <laughs> from the 1980s. From the oh, 1980s, boy. because that's the good stuff. <laughs> so Keenan, Howdy, and Jenny, my mom, start passing out. To the populace. Are we talking like GIF, Smuckers, like the, the, the healthy good, brand? Whatever, whatever the 80s good stuff was. Okay. I don't know. I wasn't alive then. Um, <laughs> I'll have to ask my parents. Fair. So they're passing it out, and all of a sudden, human flourishing starts skyrocketing. You know, it's like the scene in Elf where, like, Christmas spirit yes. like, with, like, 20 people yeah. jumps up, and, like, the whole thing goes crazy. Anyway, <laughs> about 100 people have gotten peanut butter and jelly, and all of a sudden, on Nana's watch, the human flourishing radar just shoots up. She's like, what's she's going like, on? oh, no. What's going on? So she hi- hires her assassins, Isaiah's grandparents, Mike and Sylvia. Bro, what? And Isaiah's extended family, uh, miss his parents, Mike and Laura, and his Angie and Uncle Sam, to go exterminate. Okay. So they're marching to go counteract the peanut butter killer that's being spread. Yes. Meanwhile, Anna and Emily are still, like, counterhacking Moses and Zara because they're trying to restore it to the code. Yes. All right. But then Moses and Zara pull out, like, a, a trick because they actually don't – they don't uh, restore it to the code. They put something in the code that says, hey – Go to this spot, you get peanut butter and jelly. Okay. So Mrs. Hall, who's a famous pilot on the resistance side, comes and drops peanut butter and jelly. Ooh, like exactly peanut butter and jelly bombs. Spot where the code was supposed to say. Okay. But they come and they get the peanut butter and jelly, and human flourishing is restored. And later, Will and Kara are documenting this in a famous, famous uh, documentary where they discuss what happened. Because in the far future, like turkey and ham are like outlawed because <laughs> peanut butter and jelly is just that good. Okay. And so right. were ham and turkey to be reintroduced, uh, then human flourishing would decrease. But Will and Kara are documenting the past so that people can not eat turkey and ham because they don't want to. <laughs> and that's the story. Because it's such a vile and thing. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and Isaiah's working on a prompt for next time. So how's that coming? <laughs> Actually kind of good. Oh, really? Okay, great. Well, that's good. We'll leave it on that. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed that. Support us. Five-star rating interview. Thanks for listening. Share with your friends. Until next time. Keep on booking it. <laughs>